In this episode, I've been sent a digital microscope to review, so let's see if this is any good. I get a lot of offers in my inbox to review products for various manufacturers, and for the most part, they actually end up in the trash uh, because those products are of no value to either me or the channel, and ultimately uh, to the channel viewers as well. Um, I was, however, contacted by Andon Style lately, and they wanted uh, to know if I would be happy to review a digital microscope for them that they produce. Um, full disclosure, obviously they sent me this for free, um, so maybe I'm biased. Uh, you'll have to figure that one out for yourselves. Um, all I have to do is put links in my description, and I can keep the thing. Um, the reason why I've selected this product for, uh, you know, accepted and said, yes, I'll review this product, is that lately I've started to need these uh, when I've been working on things like uh, surface mount components and very, very small optics. So I thought perhaps it was high time I actually got myself a decent digital microscope. Um, obviously, if this works very well, uh, that will be a big plus for the channel because I'll be able to do some uh, really nice, crisp, up-close photographs for you guys. But anyway, let's take a look at this thing and see if it's actually any good. So just open up this thing and see what's in the box. So we've got some instructions here, uh, got a user manual, seems pretty reasonable, seems fairly reasonable, although there's a remote control with it. Ah, oh, spoiler alert, haven't even got into the box yet. Um, fine, we've got a components list, um, not very many assembly steps by the look of it. Uh, what have we got, like six steps, um, yeah. Let's take a look in the rest of it. So, wow, this is a very large screen. Uh, this is much larger than I expected it to be. I know it said 10.1 inch on the description, but still, um, yeah, looks very, very nice. Let's just pull that out of the packaging. Wow, that does actually look, uh, like, honestly, <laughs> genuinely, this looks like a very, very nice display indeed. Um, it looks really quite well built. I was expecting maybe uh, nasty, it is plastic, but I was expecting something a little... Uh, a little less sleek, very, very nice. Um, cool, what else is in the box here? We've got all the bits. Uh, we've got a remote control. We've got some lenses by the look of it. Uh, what's all this stuff? Not entirely sure, it looks like a collection of tools, some assembly required. That looks like a set of slides, very nice. I did not expect that. Excellent, so we've got some samples to work with. I guess what to do at this stage is I'll just go away just now off camera and, uh, and assemble this thing. Let's take a look. Um, I'm actually really, 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 really very interested indeed to see what's in the slides. Very nice. The first one at the top there says pine stem, but there's a whole stack of these things. Um, so I would be very interested to see what kind of view we get out of that. Awesome. I've assembled the microscope here and the assembly was really very easy indeed. I mean, I, I did look at the pictures admittedly, but that's really all you need to do in order to put this thing together. Very, very easy. The only thing that's actually missing out of the kit is a USB adapter. I've got one here. This is actually the first USB adapter I pulled out of the drawer. Um, I'll plug this in just now and we'll take a look and see what happens and then we'll talk about adapters for this thing. So I've just plugged the microscope into my USB power adapter and we'll see something really strange happen. Um, you might be able to see it on camera already. We've got some lines appearing and then eventually it'll crash. Um, and the reason for this is that the USB adapter I've just selected out of the drawer doesn't have enough current to drive this microscope. Uh, so there's a little trap there for anybody that's new to this kind of stuff. You've got to have enough current to drive the microscope itself. So I have the microscope plugged into a, a 2.4 amp USB power supply and everything's just fine, exactly how we'd expect it to be. I suppose if I'd have taken the time to read the manual, fairly certain on about page two, I'll stick it under the microscope so we can see it. Um, there it is, five volts at two amps is what's required to drive this thing. So just bear that in mind when you come to get a USB adapter out. If you get lines across the screen, it's not a fault with equipment. Um, it is in fact low current. It has to be said, my first impressions of seeing something under the microscope for the first time, I'm actually really very impressed indeed. The screen is absolutely pin sharp. Um, it really is very, very beautiful. It, it almost, I'm sure it's not, but it almost looks like an IPS display. So I found a couple of bits and pieces just lying around that we can toss under the microscope and take a look. Here's an ESP32 board. And what a fantastic image. 
plenty of room to work on under here. So if you wanted to do some uh, SMD work, I would say that this is absolutely ideal. Uh, once again, a really, really clean and clear image. I don't think we would have any difficulty whatsoever uh, working on SMD stuff. Uh, there doesn't seem to be really much of a delay if I move my pen around under here. Uh, very, very nice. Excellent. I uh, wish I'd have had this the other week when I was repairing a Tektronix oscilloscope. This would have been just great for that. If you watch the rest of my channel, you'll know I'm quite into uh, optics and lasers. I have a sled here out of a CD player. These are actually really, very useful. They've got some really, really nice optical components in them, but they are in fact very, very small. But if we put them under the uh, microscope there, we can get an excellent view of this sled. Very, very nice indeed. If I just point at some things real quick, um, there's a little tiny cube beam splitter there, and you can see the size of it when compared with my ballpoint pen there. Um, so a lot of these, a lot of these optics have been really well worth sort of recovering, and it's very, very nice that we've got uh, such a clear view that we could get in there with a pair of tweezers and a hot air gun just to soften up those glue spots and uh, and actually remove all those components and put them to use in other equipment. Very, very nice indeed. Obviously, we want to see some more cool stuff. So I've got a selection of EEPROMs here. These are windowed EEPROMs uh, for a bunch of vintage computer work that I've been doing over the years. Um, very, very nice things to look at indeed. We will fire some of this stuff under the microscope and have a look. Look at that, absolutely fantastic. Um, again, what a really, really crisp, clear view we can have through the quartz windows of these things. You can see all the bond wires attaching across to the silicon there. Very, very nice indeed. Absolutely fantastic. A uh, very useful feature on this microscope is it comes with a remote. So if you want to record things, which I actually am doing right now, I'm actually recording the video for this stuff. Uh, if you want to record things or take a, a picture, yeah, you can just hit a button on the remote and record high resolution pictures as well. So a very, very nice feature. Uh, this is so useful because uh, there are buttons on here that you can press to take pictures of things. But of course, the minute you touch the display, especially at high magnifications, it causes the display to wobble. So it's, it's very, um, very good that they've included a remote for this job. So I've got a high magnification lens on this and we've had to get real close to the surface of the EEPROM to actually uh, get a decent image. Uh, the focal length is something like about three or four millimeters and it's just, you know, the, the lens of this thing is almost pressed up against the EEPROM window. So EEPROMs are kind of difficult to get at, but we can clearly see all of the memory cells on the silicon there. We can see the bond wires coming in. There's a bit of distortion in the shape of the image, but I actually suspect that's more due to the quartz windows that are on these things. Um, these are not optical windows by any stretch. Uh, they're just there to let in ultraviolet light so that you can erase them. Um, but very, very nice indeed to be able to look around on the surface of a chip in this level of detail. Absolutely fantastic. I'd mentioned earlier that this microscope comes with a set of slides, which I was actually very surprised to see given that this is really designed for electronics work. Uh, but with the slides is a light box. So you just replace the, um, the plug for the LED lamps and plug them into this light box here. Um, I'd, I'm hesitant to call this a stage because it most assuredly is not, but let's have a look and see what kind of view we get through this. So I'll just lay the slide on top and then we'll position the light source underneath the microscope and move the sample into view. We'll find it on there somewhere. Look at this, this is absolutely beautiful. This is a cross section of a pine stem according to the label on the slide. And whoever's done this, whoever's prepared this slide has done a really, really nice job of staining this sample. I'm not a microscopist by any stretch of the imagination, but uh, this really, really, really enhances the contrast. And you can quite clearly see uh, cellular structure all the way around the, uh, the pine stem there. Although I spend quite a bit of time up here building lasers and electronics projects, I do like to go out and get some exercise. And for that, I go panning for gold. So. In Scotland, there's a couple of places where you can buy licenses down in the Lead Hills and Wanlock Head. Uh, but the gold we have up here, you know, this ain't the Klondike, so it's very, very small gold. But under the microscope, it looks absolutely spectacular. Um, this is really, really very nice indeed. I should be able to take some excellent photographs of that. Now, you can see a couple of little bits and pieces in here. There's a bit of sphalerite there and a bit of uh, hematite, and there'll be some galena in there, no doubt, as well, because uh, they're all heavy minerals. But I suppose if you're into things like this, you know, you're into geology in general, um, you know, rocks and minerals and stuff, this would be excellent for examining those and taking pictures.
very, very nice indeed. Another cool feature of this microscope is that it has HDMI out, which means you can hook it up to a huge display like this one. This isn't even particularly large, something like 24 inches, uh, but this, this image is amazing, really, really nice indeed. If you wanted to uh, use a microscope in an environment where you had many people around, so say a classroom in a school or a college or something like that, this would be absolutely fantastic for showing students um, you know, how to do like SMD work or um, if you're interested in rocks and minerals and, or biological specimens or whatever. Um, it's absolutely fantastic that you can put it up on a large screen like this. Very, very nice indeed. As I said earlier on in the video, I was actually sent this for review by Andon Star for free. So of course, I'm going to be happy with this thing. But the big question is, would I have gone out and bought one? I can honestly say I've been really taken with this screen. And I think if I'd have seen this in a store and had an opportunity to just see just how good the images are and to have a play around with the thing, I think I would be coming out of the store with a box full of microscope. Um, and, and that's that. Uh, that being said, I think I should take this opportunity to be a little bit critical about the product um, because, well, why not? Uh, the one thing, if you're into serious microscopy, I would replace this with something more sensible. Uh, this isn't a stage by any stretch of the imagination. I mean, it does the job and we've seen it do its job, uh, but I think, you know, a proper um, XY stage would be a good add-on for this. I think for serious electronics work as well, I would like to see a swing arm released for this thing. Uh, there's, you're quite, there's plenty of room under here for hobbyists, I think, uh, but I think if you were to do like uh, very large boards, for example, or you wanted to uh, zoom in on the insides of boards in situ in equipment, I think it would be really, really handy to mount this on a giant swing arm across your bench um, so that you can take a look at things. I think this would be excellent for use in places like schools and colleges, especially by virtue of the fact you can hook this up to a, you know, any large HDMI display to sort of demonstrate things to an entire classroom as well. Uh, so really very nice indeed. And of course, last but not least, I can finally get rid of these things. Thanks for watching this episode of Leslie's Lab. If you want to see more content like this, don't forget to hit like and subscribe down below, and I'll see you guys next time.